Let me walk you through what we're going to do with this. I just want you to see, this is what happens. Remember I said, um, if you want more accuracy than this, right? As you traverse across the field, you just take more measurements, okay? So more measurements gives you, more measurements gives you more corners on your polygon, which means more detail in theory, okay? So you can see these people have uh, walked up, they've taken one to the left, they've taken another one to the right, and then the second one to the left, so that gives them three numbers off on the side. Before we actually go ahead and um, work out some stuff on this, how would we write the numbers for this diagram? I'll give you a clue. It starts with zero. Okay, okay so the easiest one is 14. That's fair enough because it's like, look, I walked up that far. And then I measured to the left. So that's where my 20 goes. Now then I keep on moving up. But when I draw this diagram, when I write this diagram, my numbers are supposed to be cumulative. Now maybe when you were doing your diagram out there, your numbers out there, you didn't do them cumulative. If you want them in this form, that's the way they're supposed to be so that we make sure we understand this progress up the, up the page. Okay. So therefore, the next number should be 14 plus 8, which 22. is 22. And then after that distance, what do we do? We measure this way. Okay? And then the pattern continues. If you put another 8 on there, you're going to get 30, after which they measured to the left, 28. Do you add like that side as well? Sorry, say that again. Do you have to add like the left side as well? or Add which number? Like 20. Oh, you mean like these numbers? Okay, the answer is like, do these numbers accumulate? Accumulate. The answer is no, because each time I'm measuring these, these are completely disconnected distances. Like they literally are not connected to each other. Whereas these, you can see, I'm trying to progress all the way along the diagonal. Does that make sense? Um, what's my last number? Cool. And your diagram, sorry, your numbers rather, are finished. Okay. So obviously you could go in reverse. If I gave you these numbers, you'd generate this out of it. Now, let me just say two more things. I'm not going to calculate this. Funny. You guys can do that when you get through the exercise. The first thing is, how many different shapes are in this composite figure? Five. I count five, right? I count one triangle here, two, three, four. And then you've got this last shape, which is not a triangle. It's a trapezium. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing I want to point out is, like this numbering is not something I just do just because it looks nice. This is how I'm going to write out my answer. I'm going to say something like area one equals, right? And I'll actually, just because it's easy, I will actually do this one. It's going to be half times base times height. And then I'm going to go ahead and calculate. But doing this, make sure I don't miss any, right? It's like, look, I put five numbers on my diagram. There better be five areas here, and I'm going to add them all up. The last thing is I just want to remind you, uh, it's a trapezium. How do I work out the area of a trapezium again? Isn't it half? Okay, so our formula is a half times the perpendicular height. Now have a look. Where's the perpendicular height on this trapezium? Yeah, it's this whole distance here, which is 16. Yeah? 16. So I, I know what that is. I'll substitute it in a minute. What do I multiply then by after that? 28. Okay, now how do I know which ones are these numbers? And it's the parallel edges in a trapezium. There's only one pair in a trapezium, yeah? So when I actually evaluate this, it's going to be half of, uh, you told me 8 plus 8, 16, times what? 20 plus 28. 20 plus 28. And then you can go ahead and work out what that is, okay? And once you've got your four triangles, your one trapezium, add them all together, and you're home, okay? So... Construct them carefully, know how to interpret this as that. When you're adding up all the pieces, just number them. Make it easy for yourself so you don't miss any. Uh, and then, I think that's all I need to say. I don't think there was a last thing out there. It's a composite area, so it's from 5D. Uh, I don't know what number it is, but it doesn't matter. You've got this big parallelogram on the outside. There are arrows that indicate it, but I just want less stuff in my diagram, not more. And out of the parallelogram, They've cut a rhombus. Now I know it's a rhombus. How do I know it's a rhombus? It's like like squashed. All, the all, all the sides are equal. Yeah, that's okay. So you've got all those marked in. Don't pack up yet. I just want you to focus because I know lots of people want to know this, the answer to these questions. Now, 
because they don't want to make the diagram too crazy. They've actually put over here on the side two extra bits of information. They give you two extra lengths. These are the lengths they give you. Okay. From memory, I think they're three and five. Okay. So therefore, how am I going to put this all together? Okay. Well, just like normally, I want to work out my big area. It's a parallelogram, and I've got its base and its height. What's the area of a parallelogram? It's just the product of those two. Seven times ten, right? Then I have to subtract the rhombus that's been sliced out of the corner, right? But again, you need to know, well, how do I work out the area of a rhombus? Half, um, the, the formula says x, y, where x and y are the diagonals, right? Three, five. Okay, so draw yourself a good diagram and they might give you measurements that aren't drawn onto the diagram, so draw them. Okay.